What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be unboxing and reviewing the Fockbox Tanka from Massive Stator. Starting with the packaging, they've opted for a smaller box, which is matte black with the gold accented Fockbox logo, which I quite like. The first thing you'll see when you open up the box is this information thank you note from Massive Stator, containing some basic facts about the Tanka, and then the Tanka itself with the heatsink side up. As you can see, the graphic is on the heatsink side right here. Underneath the Tanka is a standard power switch, which is the exact same one included with the Unity. There's also a standard USB-C programming cable, and then some extra MR60 connectors and a sticker pack included. The accessories included in the box are the exact same ones that are included in the same Fockbox Unities that we've been seeing from Massive Stator. So this is what the pretty side of the Tanka looks like. I really love the metallic orange finish that it has. I'm not that huge a fan of the graphic just because I don't really know what it means or understand it. On the back side, there is this black silicone which covers the entire motherboard and I think is there to act as a waterproof sealant. There is an XT90 anti-spark for the battery and two MR60 connectors for the motor phase wire with 12 gauge wire coming out of them. There are also the two sensor wire ports and the four other JST pin ports for the various things including UART, PPM control, and the power switch. The only thing visibly different is the fact that there is no built-in Bluetooth module on the Tanka. I spoke with Jason, the former CEO of Inertion Boards and the current CEO of Massive Stator, and he told me that the Tanka is essentially a Fockbox Unity without a Bluetooth module and some of the other expensive but non-essential components. That means that in theory it should perform the exact way that the Fockbox Unity does at a lower price point. I'm I'm guessing that one of these expensive components is the rubberized orange case that the Unity has, which is why they've opted to use this black silicone which covers the entire ESC. I don't think that it looks terrible, they make up for it in the fact that they have the beautiful heatsink on the back with the tank of graphics, but it also isn't a very polished look, and I do prefer the orange case on the Unity. Like I said, all of the connectors are the exact same, the XT90 anti-spark and the MR60 bullet connectors for the motors. I'm not a huge fan of those because they don't go with much. All of the JST connectors are in the exact same position and orientation as on the Unity. Here is a side-by-side -side shot of the Tanka and the Unity, and as you can see, they are carbon copies when it comes to where the ports are and where the USB-C connection is. Here, you can clearly see the fact that all of the ports on the Tanka and Unity are in the exact same space, exact same spot, Literally, it's the same thing without a case. Another one of the major differences is also the size of the heatsink. I think that the heatsink on the Tanka is probably a little bit bigger than that on the Unity just based on this side-by-side -side shot. Lengthwise and widthwise, the two are very similar to one another. In terms of the thickness, I think that the Unity is actually a little bit thicker than the Tanka, but the fact that the Tanka's wires come out of the top does hurt it in a little bit in that department. Here are a couple more side-by-side -side comparison shots between the Tanka and the Unity. Just quickly, here is the Tanka in comparison to some of the other major ESCs at the moment, including the Stormcore and the U-Box, both of which we have reviewed in the past and we'll leave links to in the description below. The Fockbox and the Tanka are considerably more compact than both the U-Box and the Stormcore in every single dimension. To test out the Tanka, we installed it in our Demon 2.0 instead of using the Unity that we usually use as stock. It fits in perfectly as all of the connectors and components are identical to that on the Unity. It was just a matter of plugging everything in properly, everything was very plug and play, and then programming everything according to the last VESC tutorial that we made, except limiting the motor current to 70 amps, which is all that the Tanka can handle as opposed to the 80 that the Unity can do. Now I'm going to discuss the performance on the Tanka, including some of the specs and also how it feels. Starting out with the actual specs of the Tanka, I'm just going to read these straight off of Massive Stator's website. It has 150 amps of continuous system current, 70 amps of continuous motor current, and 300 amps max current. The Tanka can take batteries anywhere from 3S to 12S, which is pretty standard. Now, according to Massive Stator, the Tanka is just a unity stripped of the most expensive components, yielding the exact same performance. This is surprising to me because according to their website, the Tanka can only handle 70 amps of motor current, whereas the Unity can do 80 amps motor current. 
so there's evidently something a little bit different there. I didn't see this at first when programming the Tanka for the first time, so I actually set the motor current to 80 amps, and this is what happened. As I was climbing a very steep hill, putting a lot of power through the board to test it out, the motors just locked and threw me off of the front. Fortunately, I was recording with the Xmatic app, which showed me that I was drawing right around 74 amps of motor current. I immediately switched this up, and since then I haven't had any issues with cutouts like this one. I took it back to that exact same hill after updating the settings and rode up three times as fast as possible to test if it would happen again, and sure enough, everything was good. So I was actually very impressed by the tank's hill climbing performance once we got it dialed down that the max motor current was only 70 amps. I only say this as there's evidently a difference in high-end performance between the Tanka and Unity as seen by the amount of motor current that each of these controllers can take. It's almost unnoticeable at lower speeds, but at the high end, this is a clear example of a difference between the two. Other than that, the results from the tank have actually been overwhelmingly positive and better than I thought. Since changing the motor current down to 70 amps, the hill climbing has been fantastic and has propelled us up pretty much every single hill. It feels pretty much identical to a Unity with a little bit less power. It's barely noticeable, but since we ride boards so often, there is a slight difference that we can tell. As with most VESCs these days, the braking is also very smooth and reliable, providing a very secure feeling when coming to a stop on hills. The Tanka was able to stop us to a dead stop and even put us in reverse on the very steepest of hills, which made us feel very safe while riding the board. The throttle is very powerful yet smooth, providing very good acceleration straight off the line from a standstill. The Tanka is pretty much exactly like the Unity in terms of the feeling if I had to sum it up. It's just a little less powerful, obviously due to that 70 amp motor current opposed to the 80 amp, but other than that, the responsiveness and the feeling of the ESC is pretty much exactly like a Unity. We've been riding our Demon 2.0 with the Tanka now for just a few weeks, so we can't speak to the longevity of this ESC, however, if it's anything like the Unity, it should be very good. There are two worries that I do have about the Tanka, and the first is customer service. Because it's a company based overseas, if you live in North America or in Europe, it's going to be very difficult to get any sort of reliable service should anything happen to your Tanka. We've had a couple of Unities, which are also sold by the same company, that have not had the best customer service and been able to be repaired just due to the fact that these service centers are not near to where we are located. The second potential issue with the Tanka is the fact that it is not as well tested of a VESC compared to some of the more premium options out there. As I've repeatedly said throughout this entire video and heard from Jason Potter, this is pretty much a Foxbox Unity without some of the more expensive components. So if this is true, then there should not be any issues as the Unity is a very well tested ESC. The fact that the two motor current maximums are a little different is a little off-putting to me, but this could be a minor issue. From what I've seen over the past couple of weeks, it's performed great, so I do think this is definitely the case. However, I can't say that with 100% certainty. At $199.99 at the moment, the Tanka is probably the best value ESC on the market. It performs like a premium VESC, however, it's at a budget price point. There's not much else that can beat it. All in all, the Tanka is a solid budget VESC option for any of you guys looking for a dual motor controller for your electric skateboard. Aside from that hiccup at the beginning with the motor current limits, everything's been great. Great power, great price point, great performance. So I would recommend this if you are looking for a budget high performance ESC. That pretty much concludes our review of the Fockbox Tanka. Please let us know if you have any questions down in the comment section below and we will do our best to respond to all of them. We will also leave a link for the Fockbox Tanka in the description so that you guys can go check it out if you're interested in purchasing one. Also, we are excited to announce that we've opened up a Patreon account for any of you guys interested in becoming patrons and supporting this channel. You can do that by donating on a monthly subscription basis to our Patreon in order to help fund the future growth of our channel and keep making videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel for lots of DIY electric skateboard content. It helps us out a lot as creators when you guys do this. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.